Hi, this is question 6 in the AQA Decision 2 June 2015 exam paper. Figure 4 sh below shows a network of pipes. The capacity of each pipe is given by the number not circled on each edge. So for example, the capacity of the pipe AB is going to be 25. The numbers in the circles represent an initial flow. We're saying initially through AB there's 20 flowing through, which means there's a capacity for an extra 5 to um, flow through. OK, um, for part A we're finding the value of the initial flow. So we want to see initially what's going into the system and, and therefore what's coming out of the system. So our source is going to be A, and A has um, 20, uh, 20 flowing through it there, 40, 10 and 30. So we've got 20, 20, add 10, add so 20 and 10 and 40 and 30. And all together that makes 20, 30, 70, 100. OK, and we can check this on the output as well, because our output, we've got 15 coming out through our sink, and another 60, and another 25. So we've got 15, add 60, add 25, and that gives us 100 again. Yes, there's 100 flowing in and 100 flowing out, so we would say the initial flow is 100. OK, part B says use the initial flow and the labelling procedure on figure 5, so that's on another page, to find the maximum flow through the network. You should indicate any flow augmenting routes in the table and modify the potential increases and decreases on the flow on the network. OK, so if I move on to where figure 5 is, what we want to do is we want to take the information here and we want to put it onto this um, network over here. So, and we're going to use the labeling procedure to do this. So, having a look, we've got um, from A to B, I know that there's 20 initially flowing through it, with a potential of 5 more to flow through. So, potentially another 5 can flow through and a potential backflow of 20. OK, so I can reduce it by 20 or I can increase it by 5. And that's because 20 is already flowing through. OK, similarly, if I go from A to E, that currently has 40 flowing through. So I can increase this by 10 if I wanted to, or decrease it by 40. Over here, this has 30 flowing through. There's a capacity of 40, so I could increase this by 10 or decrease it by 30. OK, and there's lots of these to fill in, and we do it in exactly the same way. We'll just do one more, C to F. Um, so that has a capacity of 30, and the initial flow is 30 as well. So I can't increase it anymore, so I've got a potential increase of 0 and I've got a potential decrease of 30. OK, so I can continue to fill this in, um, and I'm not going to do that. I am prepared one earlier that I'll move on to. So I've um, filled in everything that I need to on here. I can now use this diagram to update any potential um, increase or decreases in flow and I'll use this table over here to record any flow augmenting routes um, so that I can keep track of what I'm doing. So, um, my first route, so what I'm looking to do is um, just see whether there's a route to go from my source to my sink um, and decide what the maximum increase I can make. So for example, I could go a, B, D, G, J, um, and I can increase by 5 there, 5 there, 3 there, and 5 there, so the maximum I can increase this flow by is 
three. Um, so I'm just going to record that. I've got A, B, D, G, J, and I can increase that flow by three. So I'm going to reduce my potential increases by three. So that's going to become two, two, zero, and two. And I increase my um, uh, potential decreases by three. So that becomes twenty three, eighteen, eight, and eighteen. Okay. Um, I then look for another one that I can do. So I can go directly across here. So I've got A, E, H, J. Um, and that has a maximum increase of three. So if I reduce um, all of these by three, so all of my potential increases are, are going to go down by three now, and all my potential decreases will go up by three. So it's Twenty-eight. 63. Okay, and the next one I'll do will go A, F, I, J. A, F, I, J. So that has a um, maximum increase of 5. A, F, I, J, 5. So that means that I can reduce all of these by 5. So all of the potential increases are going down by 5. And my potential decreases will go up by 5. OK. And OK, I want to check to see if, if it's saturated. I I think, let's have a look, A, F, E, I, J, I can do that one, A, F, E, I, J, and again that has a potential increase of 5, J, 5, so I want to reduce my potential increases by 5, so that's going to down to zero that's going to go down to zero that's going to go down to zero and that's going to go down to five and then I increase all of these by five so that's going to become 20 that becomes 25 that becomes um, 20. So that becomes 30, and that becomes 35. Okay, so um, so on that particular one, I, I managed to saturate three of these um, edges, and that one's already saturated. So I think we're coming close to the end here, or if not the end. Um, let's see if we can spot any more. A, E, G, J. A, E, G, J, so that's got a potential increase of 2, a maximum increase of 2, so let's record that, A, E, G, J, 2, so if I decrease all of these by 2, so that's going to become 5, 1, and 0, and that's going to become 45, a E G that becomes um two five so increase that by two twenty seven and twenty. Okay, and that's now saturated there. This is saturated here, this is saturated here. Have we got any more that we can do? I can't go that way, so if I get to G, I'm stuck. Okay, and I think that we're saturated now.
all the way through so there's no way now from getting from A to J down any paths that allow me to increase the flow okay yep I'm confident that's the scenario now okay so um, my initial flow which I've not written here was a hundred and I've now increased that by three six eleven sixteen eighteen so we've now increased it by sorry eighteen So that tells me that my maximum flow now is going to be my initial flow plus 18 that I've in increased it by, which is going to be 118. Okay, um, I can now go through and I can record um, everything onto figure 6. Okay, so this is part 2 now. It says take the value of the maximum flow, which I've just done and on figure 6 illustrate a possible flow along each edge corresponding to this maximum flow so um, we've got from A to C I've got 30 and then from A to B I've got 23 A to E is 45 a to F is 20 C to F is 30 and we've got 25 35 20 63 20 15 28 27 8, 18, 5, and as you can see I've used a brilliant system for filling these in, and 10, that's 11, 12, 30, and I think that is all of my edges okay and um, so I'm just going to check on on one of my um, I'll check on my output and I've got 55 20 and 35 55 or 63 mix 118 okay so this looks like it's it's working at 118 Okay, the um, next part of the question says confirm that you have a maximum flow by finding a cut of the same value and then we want to list the edges of our cut. Okay, so just on this diagram here I'm going to demonstrate a cut that works and um, so we might want to try a few different ones um, and I think I know which one works here so we want to go through here so that's 20 and 15 which is 35 and 28 which is 63 at 30 is 93 at 25 gives us 118 okay so our edges are going to be um, I'll write them here so we've got G to J G to H um, E to H you might notice all of these are going from source to sink as well E to Y and F to Y okay so these are the edges for part C label that with part C okay and um, and that gives us a total of 118 so um, I can just list those actually I should do so that's going to be 20 15 and 28 30 and 25 28 30 35 and um, if you add those together 
And that gives us 118. Okay, you probably want to present this a little bit better. I've obviously, I'm, I'm trying to squeeze it in here. You've got, you've got a couple of pages that you can write this into. Okay, and um, part D says, on a particular day, there is a restriction at vertex G, which allows a maximum flow through of 30. So find by inspection what the maximum flow through the network would be on this particular day. So if I go back to my diagram over here, so at G, we're saying that there's now a restriction that um, means that there's a maximum of 30 that's allowed to flow through. So at the moment, through G, I've got 27 and 8, so I've got 35 going in, and obviously 15 and 20, I've got 35 coming out. So if I reduce this to 30, that means that there's going to be 5 less that's going to be coming out. So instead of 20 going down here, for example, there could only be 15 going down here. So rather than there being a flow of 118, because we've got 35 take away 30 is equal to 5, I now need to reduce this by 5. So I'm going to say 118 take away 5 is equal to 113. So that means that um, the maximum flow through the network on that particular day is going to be 113. Okay, um, I hope that made sense. Um, thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.